Um, so on this one, we have a force versus time graph, and we are going to try to figure out how much you are going to speed up or slow down. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to remember that the area underneath a force versus time graph uh, is equal to your impulse. So this area is force versus of force versus time is impulse. Um, and impulse is equal to your change in momentum. It's not how much momentum you have, it's how much your momentum changes. Um, and so the way that I like to think about this is to draw an actual bar chart. And I'm going to think about the momentum I have before, the momentum I have afterwards, and then I'm going to have my impulse here. Um, and so the area of a triangle is one half base times height. And so the base of my triangle here is five. And my force, my maximum force or the height is four. And it does not matter that it's not a right triangle. The only thing that matters is that it is a triangle. Um, so it's always one half base times height. So this is my impulse. Um, so that's 10. Um, that that's that. And then I need to figure out, is this impulse positive or negative? Is it going to make me speed up or slow down? So originally the kid was scooting along at 3.5 meters per second. Um, and then he's going to make himself speed up. So let's say he was going this fast or he had that much momentum and then I add more. I don't know which one's bigger. I don't really care right now. I'm just going to think about this qualitatively. And then that means that he needs to have that much momentum at the end. So he's going to speed up. Um, so his momentum at the beginning is mass times velocity. The impulse we just figured out is 10. And then we have our mass times velocity of the kid at the end. I'm going to use B final. All right. So mass of the kid was 22. Starting velocity was 3.5 plus 10, because that was our impulse, is equal to 22 times the final velocity of the kid. So I get 87 is equal to 22 times my final velocity. And so that means that my final velocity is 3.95. Um, you have to be really careful here that when you're doing change in momentum, it's not the same as momentum. Um, so the other way to do this um, is that you could say, okay, this impulse is equal to my change in momentum. Um, and so impulse then would still be 10. Uh, your change in momentum, the mass doesn't change. So it'd be your mass times how much the velocity changes. So that would be the same as 10 is equal to 22 times, and then you would have to do V final minus V initial. And so you would have 10 is equal to 22 times, and then the original velocity was 3.5. So I'm gonna divide both sides by 22. That's the easiest thing to do at this point because I don't want to distribute, I'm lazy. So then I add 3.5 to both sides, and I get the same answer. So that's good, because that means I did it right. So either way you do it, you're good. Just make sure that you're accounting for the change in velocity. Um, in my experience, if you do it this way, where you do the bar charts, you will not mess it up. If you do it with this way, with the, just the equation, a lot of students mess it up. Um, the other thing to take into account as well is over here, if you are trying to slow down, then your impulse will be negative. So your impulse is positive if you're trying to speed up. It's negative if you're trying to slow down. Or if you're doing a ball coming at you and you're hitting it with a baseball bat. Um, for that one, you need to remember like which direction is the ball going versus the force. So I had the ball coming in, going negative because it's going to the left. I pushed the ball to the right. That's why I have a positive impulse. And then that results in the ball moving away from me, uh, which is a positive momentum. Um, so just be really careful when you're doing these kinds of things. You're paying attention to the direction of the impulse. Um, so that, that way uh, you have the correct number here if it's positive or negative, as well as positive or negative momentums. Cool.